Hello everybody, I'm here from the Hammer Game Channel and welcome to Kaiserreich, which has been, finally guys, it's been updated, it's been updated, the China update is now here, we have some spicy trees, even Bataan has somewhat of a tree, but yeah, more importantly, what the hell, the Qing Empire faction, well we all know that's going to explode, don't we? So anyways, we're playing as Qing, um, I really wasn't planning on starting this playthrough right now, hence you know, the start of the Red Flood one, but, um, oh well, oh well, so a lot of things have changed, there's a patch notes which I really haven't kind of looked through, um, I know that Japan's tree over here has changed, um, also, Brazil's had a kind of shuffle about, where's the monarchy route? Okay, Brazil's looking interesting, um, and also Austria, Austria has got some spicy changes. Let's see if we can spot them. Ah, some new, when it looks at things, logos. That is different. Uh, I think that might be the only bit that's different. But anyways, let's get on into Ching. So, like I said, we are all together right now. Um, the year of the rat is the one focus. This is the tree. This is a tree. So it's kind of separated into basically two parts. Loyalty has its own rewards. Germany is coming to fully support our military on our own. So you know, if we have to go on our own, stuff Germany, really. Anyways, the Chinese New Year. The rat. Um, let's go ahead and actually get up-to-date guns. I think that's a must-have. I am so excited to be playing this right now. Literally. Um, it got put in my Discord. That had been updated when I was at work, and I was like, oh, for Pete's sake, of course, when I'm at work, it gets updated. So, um, yeah, we're here now, literally just home near enough. I had something to eat first, of course, um, but I was like, oh, got to get on in and play in this. Yeah, video recorded. Or, um, what is this? Substance abuser. Well, I'm not too happy about our generals. They are not the greatest. But anyways, we'll go with these pair for the, uh, for the time being. Um, that that pretty much is satisfactory for me, except for we'll get some inner war fighters in play. And let's go ahead and just make subs. Three subs, one onto the convoys. We're, th that's fine. The faction's going to blow up anyways. Decisions. Continue army reform. Um, what? The army of reform continues. Delegation council... Okay. Imagine German influence. Very pro German uh, lobbyists. Okay. I don't really want the Germans entice German financial support, encourage anti German boycotts. I, I don't really want to become a German puppet, really. That's kind of what that's looking at. The Great Ching. Uh, the internationally mediated end of the last Zili's Fengxing War in 1928 brought an end to nearly four years of chaos and instability in the longest period of peace enjoyed by some parts of China since the Xinhai Rebellion of 1911. Though Wu Pifu and his northern Zili clique accepted the return of Manchu monarchy, further German concessions were refused, leading to a cooling of relations. Germany continues to maintain support for the Qing government, but mainly with the aim of ensuring consistent competition with the also supported Southern Zili as part of a larger divide and conquer strategy in China as a whole, as well as the hopes of gradually building a Chinese bulwark against Japan. Though the spectre of Japanese domination looms across much of northern and eastern China, the country is nonetheless far more divided than most in Beijing would prefer, and Qing finds its authority contesting all sides, from the defiant Feng Shan government in the northeast to the various allies across the remainder of China, nominal components of the empire granted near total autonomy by grace of geography and uh, regionalist sentiment. As a result, Qing enters 1936 largely contained to the North China Plain and at the head of a faltering national order. Long live the emperor. Okay, we're not in a great position right now. <coughs> Primary agent asserting control over areas directly controlled by Beijing. Uh, they directly fund the Prosperity League, a lobbying group that pushes for adoption of German industrial methods of free trade while also holding several seats in assembly. 
More players tied to the popularity of the market liberal. Updates every 24. Oh, I do not want the market liberals to do anything. Anyways, 1936 finds the powerless assembly in the brink. Five groups dominate the body, and although they have no power in the chamber, the groups that support them are not to be trifled tri tri with. Uh, with most uh, powerful of these is the Harmony Association, norm nominally led by President Kao Kun. A depressed alcoholic, true power in a group resides with Pu, uh, Wu Pfu, Pe uh, Pei Fu, I don't know if I'm saying these names right, who founded the association as a legitimizing movement to ensure Zili representation in the assembly. Well, nominally an independent political party, the Harmony Association's deputies are former Zili officers and following Kao Kun's uh, legally dubious re-election, few believe the group is anything more than a front for Wu to control the country. The Prosperity League occupies a similar position, and while it claims to be a political party, few see it as more than a lobbying group for German interests in Beijing. This leaves three parties in the opposition. The Manchu Party, comprised of Qing princes and former royal hangers on. The Young China Party, a clique of young officers at the Baoding Academy, styling themselves after the Young Turk Party. And the New Chinese Empire Reformation Association, a fusion of two groups. Uh, two reform groups that, while loyal to Emperor, favour a structural reorganisation of China back to the traditional model of the rural village and the end of the warlord cliques. While these three groups are in opposition to Wu, he allows them seats in the pro uh, po powerless assembly as ways to legitimise his unpopular regime. Okay. Okay. Assassination of President Kerensky. Sad times. <laughs> Observer writes on the Legation Council. The Legation site is reformed in 1928 after the Jade Wind incident, when a European passenger train was attacked by Kuomintang bandits. While mostly designed to halt the Zili Fengxiang, uh, Fengxiang conflict that was destabilizing the Far East, the Americans also intended it to serve as a tool of their open door policy, allowing access to Chinese markets to all Western nations in Japan. Pursuant to these imperial, uh, imperialist aims, the Beijing government has been cut out of all decision-making uh, processes on the Legation Council, despite nominally leasing their territory from us. We have observer status on the Council and are able to get a view into the decisions being taken in their meetings, but beyond that, our interactions with the body are limited at a governmental level. We deserve a voice in Shanghai. Damn right we do, because it's bloody cores. So we've got a claim on that. Restructuring our debt. For the last few years, Wu and Cao have spent most of their political capital attempting to restructure and reduce the enormous debt of the Qing Empire. While theoretically possible, this plan has run to numerous challenges. The chief being a lack of support from provincial governors. The rumours of instability in the South have further complicated these plans, and uh, Kao Kun is expected to deliver a speech on reducing the national debt to the Assembly after the New Year celebrations later this month. <coughs> oh my gosh, all the lore is coming at us. Power struggle. Shanxi neutrality. Okay, okay. Oh my days. The Ch there we go. The Chinese New Year rat. In a long, somewhat rambling speech to mark the Chinese New Year, Assembly President Cao Kun addressed the need to restore the glory of the Qing Empire, unite the country, and repay the debt burdening the economy. He outlaid a three point plan government subsidies and tax cuts would be given to light manufacturing industries, farmers would be granted tax cuts to grow edible plants instead of cash crops and an increased tax on provincial governors. The speech is met with polite applause. The sale of the Zigan Railroad. The past few weeks have been a great deal of economic activity in the League of Eight Provinces. The southern conglomerate of provinces ruled by our nominal subordinate, Sun Chaofang, Chaofang, I don't know, even more heavily influenced by German economic support than we are, the League just finished construction on major railroad, the Zigan Line. Though funny by the Germans, it was largely built by Chinese labour, leading many to hope for a more equitable relationship between German and Chinese in the League, at least in economic affairs. As a few days ago, in a surprise move, the EOG publicly announced its plans to purchase and consolidate a number of eastern ra railroads on behalf of their subsidiary group, the SEG, that's what we're going to call them, including the new Zegan route. This move angered many native Chinese residents of the League who saw the Zayan line as a potential building block in an equal relationship between Europeans and Asians. Widespread protests have broken out, inflamed by conspiracies of fraud and embezzlement on the part of the Sun's cronies. So you, this is basically AOG here. But it's not. We'll see what happens with them. Anyways, we have focuses to take. Encourage export farming and new taxes. They only take 14 days each. 
German mining companies increased their operations in eastern Shaanxi. Shaanxi region has always been a good source of coal and useful metals for the empire. Following the Fourth Zili Fengxiang War, we gained direct control of eastern Shaanxi, a slim area of land that used to belong to Yang Shan's Shaanxi clique. Our ownership of eastern Shaanxi has been the cause of tension between us and the Shaanxi clique, but for now, they are unable to compete with our military strength, much like the rest of Shaanxi, but this area is rich with coal and iron. Multiple German companies took an interest in the eastern Shaanxi and so purchased the coal and iron mines there. These mines sit very close to the border with the Shaanxi clique, but this has not yet been a problem. However, news just came in uh, that these eastern Shaanxi companies are going to increase their mining operations and are presenting plans that show some of their mines fall into Shaanxi controlled territory. We personally do not need to worry about this, but it is likely to cause some problems in the Shaanxi clique, with many peasants feeling robbed that these German companies are taking their mines. Well, I can see war happening with them at some point. <clears throat> I can see war happening with everybody here. Because they control our land. Oh my days, so much reading. Widespread attacks on foreigners. Following unrest surrounding the Zagan uh, Railroad, a number of German investors and businessmen have been savagely attacked by rabid anti-foreign mobs. To make matters worse, widespread boycotts of German goods have, been, have began in the south. And this morning reports reached Beijing of bombings of railway stations in... Hangzhou and other cities in central China. Railway transportation has grown to a halt in many regions of the league. The KMT guerrillas have used this opportunity to stage increasingly daring attacks in the isolated league garrisons. The German ambassador is demanding accountability, and while the league is largely autonomous from our control, we still need to do something. Z Jiang, Jiang, Bali, and other Zili officials have long pushed to exert greater control over the league and are urging Wu to use this crisis to leverage great control over the self. Wu is personally uncertain of this, but is currently drafting a telegram to demand accountability from Sun and offer our help should he need it. Unsaid, of course, is the demand for increased control over league affairs should he accept our help. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this blow up. Two Zhang's enter. It's a real bastard. Um, see what happens. Encourage export farming is done. Let's do the new taxes. Oh, the woohoo incident. Trauma information reached uh, Luyang in Beijing this morning. While reports are somewhat contradictory, it appears there was some sort of a massacre of peaceful protesters by League and German troops in the city of Wuhu. Some claim German troops simply mowed down the protesters, while other claims a group of KMT radicals attacked the Germans and League troops first. Whatever the cause, the city has fallen into anarchy and protests have sprung up all over the league. Ironically, at the same time we received this information, we received a report from Sun claiming he has the situation under control. Some Zili generals are pushing for major intervention in the South should the situation deteriorate further. Wu has yet to take a clear position on the issue. Further exasperating our problems? You know I'm not great at reading. An informant we have placed within the NCERA claims they have somehow received information on the situation and are planning to give a, scra a scathing sorry, speech later in the assembly today. Scratching speech, great. HA officials are attempting to rouse Calcoon from the drunken stupor and write a counter speech where we've been caught off guard, under control, my ass. Gosh, we've done. Oh! Hmm. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. We have another wee guy popping up here. The province of Anqing, long chafing, un uh, chafing under Sun uh, Sun's rule. It's probably Sun's rule. <laughs> rule. Oh gosh! Essentially declared independence from the league this week. In a widely distributed pamphlet, Governor Chen Taoyao Taoyao I don't know claimed that the Wuhu incident shows that Sun cannot. Okay, I'm going to come soon from now. On, cannot manage this crisis and essentially abrogates him from any responsibility in Anqing. Some Zili generals have unalliteratedly, I don't know, begun to mobilize their troops against KMT incursions, though Wu right, rightly suspects their true intention is territorial expansion, seeking to undercut their opportunity to invade. He declared a national state of readiness this morning to all Zili and Manchu generals, urging them to ready their troops for any possible armed conflict. Confused Zili troops have largely fallen into line with the Wu and any premature attack self was effectively ended before it began. Let's hope this keeps them in line. Zhang Zongchang serves t severs ties with Beijing. Wait, who? I don't know. 
Position of Sangdong Governor Zhang Zhongchang has always been uh, tenuous at best. An erratic, violent man, Zhang previously held close ties to Zhang Zuwen of the Fengxiang government, though he had been loyal to Beijing through bribery and lavish commissions. Yeah, let's get rid of him. He's, he's a terrible person. Taking bribes. It appears he has used the chaos uh, uh, enveloping the cell, however, to cast as a side. This morning, a number of our tax collectors were halted at the provincial border, and spies within the province reported he has carried out mass purges of Qing loyalists. Even worse, they report him making contact with Zhang Zulin and the Japanese. Damn you, dogmeat general! Oh, you. You. How dare you! Oh, no. Okay. To the eminent President Ch uh, Chao Kun and the Imperial Minister Wu Pe uh, Pefu, Governor Cheng, I uh, humbly ask for funding for my troops, as outlined in the uh, constitu uh, Constitution of our great nation. It is responsibility of the national government to provide funds to provincial gov uh, governors to suppress unrest. With the situation of Marshall soon unclear, I have taken the responsibility of protecting the province of Anqing against bandits and leftists or agitators. Telegram was delivered to Wu Pe uh, Pefu this morning from Governor. And Cheng. Chen. Well, the tone of the letter was very bold. It appears Chen has restored order to the province. He was faced with a choice. Chen would be a powerful ally, but he has a firm anti concession stance. Supporting him in the long term would alienate Germany, whose support will be essential in the end of the war against Japan. At the same time, taking a stance against Germany would undoubtedly end your way with the population. Send the gold. We need stability on our borders. I'm going to send the gold. With widespread unrest sweeping the League of the Eight Provinces, governors, Jin. Uni of Henan and Zhao Yaonan has have reported increasing numbers of refugees flooding into their provinces. Low started to trickle over the course of the last few days. The flow dramatically increased, with whole with whole families fleeing an explosion of violence and banditry. The governors have sp uh, sent worrying telegrams after some of their men interviewed some of the refugees, indicating central authority within the league has collapsed far more than previously thought. Furthermore, they have requested additional food and supplies to deal with the refugees. Yeah, we're going to send supplies. We need to. Death of Wang. Earlier this morning, Wang Cheng Bin, a senior member of the Zili clique and major ally of Kao Kun, passed away due to old age. Well, his death in and of itself is below to our command structure. It reveals a worrying trend. Many senior Zili military officials are of old age, poor health, or both, and the corruption indictment. Indictment uh, in our military prevention group officers are advancing through the ranks unless a serious effort is made or high command will soon consist solely of dobbering senile old men terrified of adapting new technologies and doctrines. Oh, goodbye, Wang. Division organization. Oh, deepening leadership crisis. We need to resolve that ASAP. Cheng firms our leadership. Governor Chen. Of Anqing formally reaffirmed Puai's leadership of China today in a radio speech broadcast across his territory. Well, he admitted initially he found the idea of Emperor Anna Krosnik? I don't know. He followed that up by enthusiastically endorsing our new anti concession stance, Puai's devotion to the cause. He concluded his speech with the admiration, administration for the Zili leadership, an apologetical figurehead can be useful in modern state, and with Wu. And Kao, at the helm of our great nation, we can drive all the foreign scum who have polluted our country and restore it to its greatness. The speech was well received by intellectuals of Beijing and other urban areas. Some have begun to desert the NCERA and the UCP for the Harmony Association, bolstering our popularity and legitimacy among the, general's popul uh, the general population. Apologies for some of my reading. We are going to try and stick with the, uh, the Harmony Association, I think. A letter of thanks from Chen. Um, has written his sincere thanks to Marshal Wu. Complimenting his ministry and their dedication to Chinese solidarity. Governor Chen promises that his defense of Chinese sovereignty signals the end of Western interferences in the Yellow River Valley and lavishly affirmed Wu's belief in Chinese superiority over the AOG forces they face. Oh my gosh. Oh, so much reading. And I don't read very well. <laughs> Apologies. Overwhelming national debts. Actually, oh, we are just in a great, great, great place. Emergency meeting of the senior Zili members. Oh, deal with unrest. Oh, bloodbathing Yang Zi. Despite their best efforts to deal with the influx of refugees, the governors of the southern provinces are overwhelmed. Following province-wide declaration of martial law made in Hubei, Governor Zhao 
ordered his troops to shut down all bridges and roads leading into the province from the weak territory and denying entry to all refugees. A large number of them, however, began to mass at the bridge over the Yangtze River, demanding entry. While well, this started peacefully, quickly escalated into a full scale riot as refugees began to pelt. Uh, troops with rocks, bottles, and their debris. Eventually, a group of men who had somehow armed themselves with stolen weapons began shooting at the troops, who responded by open fire with machine guns. Those not hit by the storm bullets fled, stampeding over refugees and leaving their friends and family dead or dying on the bridge. This grisly scene is being repeated up and down our border with the League as mobs of refugees have started to force their way into our territory. The Austrian Empire withdraws from Italy. That's a new little pop up. Glorious. They have they've left Italy? Wow. Wu's Nightmare? Oh no! No, Wu's Nightmare. Anyways, the last few weeks, Wu, dreams have been terrifying. Tonight, he sees Beijing burning, the ghost of Sun Yat-Zen, stepping from the collapse of Forbidden City and approaching a frozen Wu. Just as he approaches, uh, no, just as he reaches his hand out to touch him, he is awoken by an alarmed official. Apologies for waking you, Commissioner. This is urgent. He hands Wu a telegram before scuttling away. Blinking, a uh, back sleep. Wu opens the telegram, reading the characters, his hands start shaking, his worst nightmare has become reality. Soon, shot yesterday, PM, stop. Perpetrator are unclear, stop. In coma, stop. Unlikely to awake, stop. Riots widespread, stop. Feeling, fleeing with gold and documents, stop. Two hours later, Luoyang is frenzied hub of activity. Documents concerning Soon's more salious dealings with Beijing burn in furnaces while a group of senior Zilli officials confer with one another. An unprecedented move, Wu has invited several Manchu nobles, notably Fu Ya? Is that supposed to be you? To be uh, presented for the drafting of some reform of a unified statement in response to the assassination. God help us all. I thought you were dead. Marshal Key's offer. Following acceptance of Governor Chen's request for aid, a message has arrived from the new Marshal of the League of Eight Provinces. Key Zian, I, I'm so sorry if there's any Chinese people watching right now. I, I just cannot pronounce names. To the most auspicious marshal, I request your aid in the rebellion and Qing, as you are my legion commander, it is only proper that you assist me in the times of need. If virtually of Marshal Key, our commitment to Governor Chen forces us to refuse his request. The die is already cast. Imperial Navy flees north. <gasps> Cancelling docking rights with the. Oh no! Lacking any suitable ports in the north, the Imperial Fleet has been based out of Nantong since the end of 1927. Uh, conflict. With rioting, civil unrest, and general chaos evoking the city, Admiral Wu has ordered the fleet to leave the city and head north for the small ports we control outside of Tianjin. The fall of Nanjing docks also means we have lost what limited naval manufacturing capabilities we had. No! No! Emergency meeting of the Zili! Fleet, come on home! Following the collapse of the League to the south, we have gathered nearly all senior Zili aligned military officials in Luyang. As the meeting starts, Marshal Wu opens with a short statement. Fellow soldiers, the time has come with the collapse of the League. We are, for the first time since the Xifeng War, in a precarious situation. Every choice we make over the next few weeks will determine the outcome of China for decades to come. I would like to remind some, he says, glancing at the more hawkish members of the assembly, that intervention is not necessarily the most sound course of action. We need to weigh our options first before committing. Various generals not in agreement and begin a series of discussions on the best course of action. We need to be careful. Yes. And ripples of Black Monday. Gosh dang it. While in the weeks following Black Monday, it appeared that we had escaped the worst of damage. The, the last few days, German affiliated businesses have been hit with the supply chain issues and increased prices. While the economic disruption, disruption is nowhere near the scale experienced in Europe and the Americas, this is still a blow to our economy. Oh, we only get it for 150 days. That's that's good, and their support is going down. Ha ha ha. The illusion of Qing hegemony shatters. Oh no. Oh no. The faction has died. Uprisings. Oh no. When, where? While most of China and the world assumed that the Kuomintang were destroyed in 1927, League Marshal Sun has been fighting a low-intensity guerrilla conflict with remnants of the KMT since the end of the Northern Expedition in the Fuyan area. Reports were censored from the press and even Wu remained largely unaware of the true scope of the conflict, with Sun keeping all the details tightly under wraps. With the current chaos in the League, however, the remnants of the KMT have re-emerged and declared a new campaign of national reunification. They have declared a rightful government illeg illegitimate and calling us little more than a German puppet, slaving to the whims of Berlin. 
We can only hope that the remnants of Soon's forces can put these traitors down. Oh, it's Wang. Oh. Okay, I might come and play as them. You are radical socialists. Wang! What have you done? Oh no. Oh no. Oh, here comes the fire. And wait, what? Skirmishes between Chen's troops and forces still loyal to the League have escalated in open battles, and now comes time to honor our commitment to general and launch our intervention in support of his regime. Okay. Popular support from Wu. Following Marshal Wu's decision to attack the Nanjing government, he ordered President Cao Kun to make a public statement regarding the plan. Broadcast from a balcony in the Forbidden City to a large crowd gathered below. It is also transmitted over the radio, a first in China. Citizens, for a century we have suffered under foreign oppression. For too long we have been lapdogs to the whims of the British, Germans and Americans. But no more. Today we stand independent. The armies of the Son of Haven, uh, Heaven sorry, march south to destroy the traitor Marshal Key and his German lackeys. Will no longer be sub, uh, subservient to the whims of Berlin. We cast off the shackles of century of humiliation and say to the world, China is free once again. The speech is met with resounding applause and cheers, and soon sections of it are transcribed to pamphlets and passed around China. Gosh, everything is kicking off. Pfft. Okay, we are. We have intervened in favour of An Qing. Okay. Okay, we're, we're sorting things out ourselves. Fragile Empire goes there. Good. New elections. Resignation from the Legation Council. With our new anti concession stance, we have formally resigned from the Providius Legation Council. No more will we answer the foreign scum who exploit our country for their own financial gain. Yeah, we've. Oh my days. Southern Governors cut contact. With violence in the league escalating daily, the governors of Yunnan, uh, Tang Zhao and Yang Zi Chen have stopped responding to official government requests for information and updates on what is happening in their territory. They have long despised our government, and while this is while this move is not unexpected, it represents a complete change in their official demeanour to our government. Many in Wu's inner circle fear that he this heralds a complete collapse of our authority. And this morning, news out of Shang Xi confirms these worries. Yan Governor Shangxi has formally denounced the actions of our government in what is now being termed the Yangtze incident earlier this week. But Governor Wang forces fired upon a mob of refugees and proclaimed that Qing no longer had the cap uh, capacity to rule China. He stopped just short of uh, recognizing the Feng Chen government, but it is clear that the national order is breaking down. Oh no. Yeah, we, we backed them. Oh my days, we may have... Yeah, this... Oh my... Oh gosh. Closure listing of, of the former eight provinces of the... The Pony Miss League succeeded from both the agglomeration and our regime as a whole this morning under the command of scholar Brewer Kat Chen, backed up by warlord Ma Ji, promises declared our government wholly illegitimate and promised a swift end to the autocratic and anarchistic monarchy. Oh! Immediately following President Cao's incendiary speech, plumes of smoke began to emerge from the streets outside the German embassy and the offices of the Peking Commission. A vast mob formed outside the gates, chanting anti concession slogans of burning German made clothes, furniture, and hastily constructed effigy of the Kaiser. Police and ZLN uh, military units quickly uh, arrived to pre prevent the scene from turning ugly. After nightfall, most German officials and the Chinese hangers on had fled. Without German support, you're forced to improve your military on your own. Unlocks on our own military tree. On our own. On our own. Well. Oh, the Manchu generals. Okay. Purchase ships from Sicily. Well, hire foreign advisors and mercenaries. Finance succeeds from the League. Oh my days, it's becoming even more a mess. Nam province has fallen under the sway of Sun Chifang during the chaos falling in 927. Northern expansion with Governor Zhao Hengtai reassuming control of the province after a brief period of KMT rule. Longtime ally Wu, Zhao has been governor of the regime since 1920. However, he has ties to the federalist government in um, Yangtze. I don't know. Tact 
tactically supporting the federal model. As for now, he has taken a strictly neutral stance, torn between his personal friendship with Wu and his political loyalty to the Chen. His neutrality, however, cannot last long as already quills are beginning to circle around his rule of the province. What is happening? Civil war in sh oh my days. Long played by overpopulation food shortages has erupted in a civil war ever since the 1927 restoration. Yang Sen, close personal friend and ally of Wu, has ruled the province, but in the last few years his control began to slip. Various other factions loyal to the Feng Shang regime, Kuomintang remnants, and the isolation loyal, Iso um, isolationists loyal only to themselves began to consolidate power and use the collapse of the league as a perfect moment to launch attacks on Yang's now shaky government. Yang has yet to reach out to us for direct aid, preferring to hide the scope of the unrest, but Wu expects his old friend to come knocking for help any day. Right, let's... We can send out three divisions. Our divisions are probably absolutely crap because we really haven't looked at them. Oh my days, Asia is blowing up. Gallo Caesar control of Ecuador. We don't care about Ecuador, we just care about Asia right now. Yep, restoration to democracy of Australasia. Yang Shen uh, requests support. Dire news coming in from uh, Chengdu. The tenuous peace in the regime fell apart not long after troubles in the League of Eight Provinces reached the boiling point, greatly diminishing the influence of the leader Yang Shen. The international uh, internal divisions in the clique have escalated into open conflict as the Chongqing warlord Li Jiang, leader of the industrial corps with his massive force and manpower and firepower alike, has begun to march on Yang's forces. For now, at least Yang's allies in the Baoding department under Deng remain, but even that is an uncertainty as the situation spirals further out of control with every passing day. With the current chaos in... I don't know how to say it. It can be ruled out that prolonged conflict where both sides exhaust their strength could lead to the remnants of the KMT under Lu Chao, seizing the moment to reverse their old misfortunes. As it wasn't enough, persistent droughts have hit hard already struggling... Uh, the area's already struggling people. The disaster looming over... Our old friend Yang has reached out to us, pleading that we offer any support we muster, may muster. While the consequences of a defeat for Yang could prove severe for us in the future, we must have our own crisis in light of the situation in Nanjing. Oh, send him what we can spare. I'm trying to help out everybody, which may bite me in the arse. We might be stretching ourselves a bit thin. New elections! Oh. As a decision to report the Nanjing government has been met with great support and approval from the population. In response, Marshal Wu has persuaded Assembly President Kao Kun to declare a national election to capitalise on our new support. Theoretically, all the threat men in China are eligible to participate. But local warlords, widespread chaos in the League, and other issues means that we only expect results from areas under our direct control. Previous elections have been razor thin margins, and while the body is largely powerless, a buffer in the number of seats under our control will bolster our legitimacy in the long run. We're scheduling the elections. Right, 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 right. Lessons for the intervention. Future the ZDT. Oh. Defense plan. Or none. Hmm. The purpose will swap out this tree for the Manchu restoration tree. Oh. Okay. Who has not intervened? Wow, so let's go ahead and do this. It's gonna take 42 days. Our volunteers are almost here. Are we almost there? We're gonna have a little bit of a longer episode today. KMT and Indian Socialist Overthrow Tibet. What? That's not Tibet. It's Tibet's here. Whip army into shape. Oh gosh. Oh, they actually have a decent nice wee tree. Empower the dog dobs. Okay. Where did the volunteers get in here? Now. Actually, let's go up. Let's go down here. Uh, the Lindbergh of the East. A young pilot named Sun Tongang has earned great renown for flying across Eurasia. Eurasia and his custom self built aircraft. With the recent upheavals within the League, he has volunteered to serve our nation as a pilot, destroying our enemies from the skies. And originally based in Nanjing, he has fled the chaos currently invoking the city for our territory in a small plane. Nice! It's pretty cool, actually. Right, there and to the port. 
We could send planes as well. I'm not going to bother, though. Just see if we can cut off the capital. That's what we're going to try and do. Oh, my day. It's just... What a mess. Actually, we maybe shouldn't... Oh! Oh, they died. Pius elected a new pope. Okay. Stand with Beijing. Oh, phew. Then stand with Japan. Oh! Oh, what are you doing? Damn, you are you are on a warpath, son. What do you think you're doing? My volunteers are coming back. Oh well, famine breaks out. Oh no. Major famine, civil war. Oh, not great, not great. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna leave that first episode there. So thank you very much for watching. Why are you such a? What the? F what is this? They change your tree, Mongolia. You're so. Where's all the? Where's your warpathing abilities? The nobility takes power. The Buddhist revolution. Okay, okay, cool, 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 cool. Anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I shall be back very soon for some more. Take care. Cheerio, bye. Then out.